Okay, I've moved the table because I want to explain what I'm going to do now. I've done this much and that's the bit where the cat was sitting <laughs> um, and it's hard now to reach underneath to get into the middle so I'm going to, I could turn it round and start working from this side that could that I could definitely do that but I haven't quite decided if that's too wide yet so I want to carry on working from this side and the only way I can do that is by rolling this piece of work on to the uh, to the frame so that's what I'm going to do now. And it's just like setting the frame up. It's a bit like wrestling with um, with these nails and hooks and things. So uh, this could take me some time and be a bit hard. My table's just about the right width. This is a very big frame. I think I might have said that a lot of times. <laughs> so now I've got the cross pieces back in. As some people do this work, without having it under tension. It's looking like rather a good idea at the moment. I've gained myself about three inches there and I need a little lie down now. So there it is finished. It's taken me ages, but I've done it in between doing bits and pieces of other things. So it's not been one continuous thing. Uh, now, it's still on the frame. And before I take it off the frame, there's one more thing we have to do. Uh, so the, when I cut the clips, I cut them with the rotary cutter, but they weren't all exactly the same size. And so I'm going to give this a little trim. So the way that I'm going to do that, I'm just going to put my hand underneath it so that I pop it up like that and then just come along and just shear off all the big bits. And just give it a proper little haircut. I mean, this is not, this is a draft excluder. It, it doesn't have to look amazing. I think it does look rather lovely, but it doesn't have to look, you know, it's not a beautiful hearth rug or anything like that. So I'm just going to trim these with my lovely scissors here, sharp scissors, and just trim all the bits that are just a bit proud. Sticking up a little bit too much, give it a bit of a haircut and a ruffle. And then after I've done this and taken off all the high points, I'm going to take it off the frame. And you always see one more just when you think you've finished. It's a very messy business, this. There'll be a lot of hoovering up to do after this. So all these little bits are just going to settle. That'll do. Now then, I'm going to unstretch the frame, take the side pieces out and get my, unpick, my seam unpicker and take it off the frame. Let's do that now. Remember how carefully I sewed this onto here? Well, I'm going to unpick it now. 
And the careful thing about unpicking this, and I'm going to need my glasses on, excuse me. What we have to be really careful of is this webbing, which is fixed to the frame here. We want to be careful that we don't damage that because this frame's going to get used over and over and over and the webbing needs to stay nice and intact. So you would never cut that webbing. I'm going to take this ripper here and I remember how carefully I sewed this on. <laughs> and I'm going to now just rip those stitches out and release it from the frame. So I didn't damage that at all. This is all ready for the next time I use it. I don't know when that will be, but um, <laughs> I can put it away now and it will be fine. Which means now that the piece of work is now off the frame. So the next thing now is to work out how I'm going to stitch this together so that it can be the the uh, draft excluder I intend it to be and also what I'm going to fill it with, what I'm going to put inside. Now I've thought about that. I could put ordinary stuffing in, but that might bend. And then the other thing I thought might work is I've got uh, one or two old towels, really, really old towels. And I thought if I roll those up and wrap this round it, that actually might uh, work. I'm going to try a few different things. Uh, but for now, it's done. And I quite like it. Let's see what, I, let's see what it, it, it looks like when it's finished. So I re removed a couple of rows because it was a little bit too wide. This is annoying having done... Uh, extra rows but that's okay um, so I've taken this very old towel and laid it down in the middle of this um, and now having folded in the edges of the hessian I'm now taking the same good thread that I used to sew it onto the frame and I'm just I'll see if you, I'll see if I can angle you down so you can see what I'm doing there we go. So it's double, so it's really, really thick. And I folded in the edges of the hessian, you can hardly see, here and here. And I'm just taking a bite of the hessian as near to the, oops, as near to the um, clippies as I can. And then on the other side, the same. And it's tricky because it keeps getting stuck in the clips like that. So, but it's tricky, but it's not impossible. And then with a bit of luck, when I've sewn that together like that, you won't even be able to see where the join is. You gonna inspect that for me? It's all right, isn't it, Norma? Yeah. Norma says it's okay. So I'm just gonna battle with it now. This whole thing's been a bit of a battle, but I'm, I'm on the home straight now. Now I've done, excuse me, Nor, Excuse me. Thank you, darling. Thank you. So I've done that much and I'm wondering what to do with the end, but I'm just going to poke the edges in and stitch those together. So I'm just going to battle on with this now, a bit like wrestling with um, a big piece of... You can't see with a cat in the way, can you? But I think I'll just do it and I'll show it to you when I've done it. All right. I'll get back to you at the end. I think it's going to be fine. <laughs> Thank you.
Now I've sewn the folded in edges really, really firmly. I also sewed the edges together here, just quite roughly really, but very firmly. And now having had a little shake, you can't even tell where the join was, I'm hoping. So let's go and try it by the door, shall we? I'm very pleased with that. And it will keep the drafts out beautifully. So it looks like the cats will get their windowsill mat after all. Uh, I've got just a bit more clips than that left. And so what I've done, I'll just put those back in the box for a second and show you what I've done. I put this small piece of hessian on this big frame and I've done, I started here and I've I've just done to here, uh, that's nine inches and that's how wide it needs to be. And so I didn't do to the end here because I thought if I don't have enough clips, it'll only be four or five inches, but now I have, so I'm going to carry on and work it this way now. And so, yeah, the cats are going to get their window mat. And so this is the last little bit I'm going to tag on the end of this video. And I just wanted to talk to you about the cats. Uh, if anybody saw that video that I made, um, I'll link it again up here, which was the um, the welcome to... Oh, hang on. Big frame. It was the welcome to all the people who'd newly subscribed to the channel and then we've had another little blip so I, I linked it again and so if you've seen that video I'll, I, I'll link it one more time in here then I introduce it to all the cats I'm going to work while I'm talking to you and at the time I, I said that Prudence had been very poorly and I'd taken her to the vet and the vet had said that she had a, a, a tumour on her kidneys and that she was very, very poorly and she should be put to sleep. And so I said, oh, don't do that. I'll take her home and I'll look after her. And that was last March, so nearly a year ago. Well, I'm here to tell you that Prudence got very, very poorly and she died about three weeks ago. She just lost a lot more weight. She was drinking a lot more and she stopped eating altogether. And I thought, well, I could take her to the vet. I could put her in the cat basket and give her a really scary ride, uh, you know, for three quarters of an hour to the vets. And I could, um, you know, because I'm not allowed to go in the vets due to the pandemic. And so I could just give the cat basket to a complete stranger and, uh, and then never see her again. Or... I could just sit with her on the sofa and stroke her uh, until she passed away. And that's what I did. And Norma came and sat on my knee. And uh, she, just a few hours before she died, she was purring. <laughs> she was so, such a sweet cat. And so although I, I'm guessing she, there was some sort of cat pain going on there but she was very stoical and she was just very very weak and her kidneys packed up entirely and so I just sat with her and stroked her for a little while I was dropping water into her mouth from a dropper but she didn't want that she actually fought away from that so I stopped doing that uh, and just sat with her and um, 
and she died. Um, my son came, uh, John, and made a hole in the garden. And um, that's where she is now. And there isn't a day has gone by since then that I haven't really missed her. Because I always joke that, you know, I've got four cats and that's too many cats. Turns out to be exactly the right number of cats. She she had a good last few months with me here. And, and as deaths go, it was a good death. Here at home with the other cats around her. The cat Rita, who's her sister, came across and uh, touched noses with her a few times. Just to sort of like... It, it's really easy to get anthropomorphic about this and start giving the cats sort of human emotions but you know the cat really was coming to check in to see how she was doing and Norman ne never left my side but then she never does anyway I don't know where she is now she's usually right here she's somewhere about fast asleep but anyway it's been a, a, a strange few weeks without her and I just wanted to tell you I want to tell you uh, about that. She was eight years old. She and Cat uh, Rita are sisters and they're eight years old. And I'm just going to tell you about the day that I went to, to get to get this cat. It's quite a com complicated story why I decided I needed another kitten. I had Norma. It's, it's quite complicated. I wrote about it in the little book called A Winter's Tale. And um, I went down to the village. My next door neighbour said to me uh, she knew someone who, whose cat had had kittens. And so I arranged to go down and see these kittens. And uh, there they were, just sort of in the kitchen, sort of playing around. And I saw Cat Rita. Owen hadn't met his wife-to-be then. He hadn't met Rita then. So, um, you know, calling her Rita was... Um, but so the little kitten that was Rita just was in the kitchen and I looked at her and I, I liked the markings on her face. And I thought, oh, yeah, she's really pretty. Uh, I'll have that one. Can I have this one? I said to the woman. Uh, yes. Yes, of course you can. She said, uh, you know, they're ready to leave in about a week's time. So I was sitting just, uh, you know, looking at the kittens. Then then another kitten walked around the corner where she'd been and she just walked around the corner and she was the prettiest kitten I've ever seen in my life and that was Prudence and I thought oh dear I only want one kitten and I've already decided I'm going to have this one and so she was just so beautiful and so I said to, to the woman would you mind if I had two kittens and that was how I ended up with two kittens because I I fell in love with Rita first, but then Prudence came round the corner and just knocked, knocked me for six with her beautiful looks. They were six weeks old in these pictures. And then I brought them home and Norma was absolutely furious, furious that I'd got, an, I'd got more cats. She just looks so angry. And, and pretty much hid from them. Anyway, they, they the kittens were great and um, they created havoc like kittens do. And Prudence uh, and Rita too grew up to be very, very beautiful cats. As soon as you get a pet, the day you get a pet, you have to accept that the day will come when you no longer have that pet for whatever reasons. And that's happened to be lots of times where I've lost a cat to an accident on the road, this busy road here. And, you know, I've lost three cats to that road over 30 years. And, um, and Norma's 20. Uh, and I always imagined that she would be the cat I'd be talking about first. I'll finish this mat. I'll put it on the windowsill. And Sadie and Rita and Norma will enjoy sleeping on this, maybe.
Well, I think we can safely say that Norma likes that side of the mat, but is she going to like the other side? Let's see. It's going to sit there on the windowsill. And right next to it on the windowsill is this, which was some of my very early spinning that I knit up and felted in the washing machine. And that's there now. And as you can see, it gets approval. But I'm just wondering with this one here now, let's just introduce a cat to it, see what happens. <laughs> what do you think of that, Norma? Ah. Worth all the effort. Worth all the effort, Norma. That's all there is left, which can go on the compost heap.